So we're back to working on the pauldron, and at this point we've finished forming, we've got all the contours we like, so we're ready to paint it. A few things you need to consider when you're painting your leather is what colors you intend to use. Um, is this going to be one color? Is this all black? Is this all white? Is this all one thing? Or are you thinking something with multiple colors? For my design, I've got this beautiful crane emblem that I'm trying to use, and I know in my mind's eye, I've decided that this perimeter is going to be red, and I would also like the crane design to be red. And so um, I wanted to determine what would be a good color on the background that would sort of match the style I was going for. And I've selected a black. Um, I think they, they balance really well together. These are the, the two colors that I'm working with. You can pick these up at Tandy. You can also pick them up at McPherson. However, when you get the ones at Tandy, they're very little. And so that's going to limit uh, how much coverage you're doing. So if you're doing a lot of armor, um, McPherson supplies these larger bottles. So here I've got the chili red and then the flat black. You can also get gloss. Um, I prefer the flat. I don't know why. I think it's probably because most of the leather, if it's not patent leather, has a, you know, a flat look to it. So the armor blends in instead of stands out. I usually I let the rivets or spikes or studs or whatever I'm doing be the highlights and I want the paint to sort of fall into the background of my design. So when you set up, I like to use a piece of cardboard. Um, it allows you to lift your workpiece and move it once you're done. So you're not just trying to, you know, hang it on a wire and hope that everything works the way you intended. Uh, you can do that, but it's a little bit nerve wracking. So I cut out the cardboard, you can paint on it, get it messy, move it around. And when you're done, you know, you just check it. No big deal. However, newspaper works fine, tends to crumple. So the lifting part doesn't work as well. So I would encourage you to have a board underneath your newspaper in case you're working on a kitchen table and other people want to use the kitchen. All right, so let's talk about brushes. You do not need the super fancy oil painter's brush. Okay, it does not need to be the most expensive brush. You can use them, they work great, but make sure to clean them, they're super expensive. I'm not gonna use the filbert, that's silly. Just any old tiny brush for your detail work will, will be sufficient. However, if you're doing a lot of coverage, like let's say you are doing one monochromatic flat black piece of pauldron, chip brush, it's a dollar. You can get them one inch, inch and a half, two inch. I mean, they just get wider and wider and it's like from one to two dollars and it's a throwaway thing. So even if you screw up the brush, uh, it doesn't matter. I tend to rinse them and reuse them. They work great. They work great multiple times, but it's, it's a really good way to get a lot of coverage very quickly. However, if you're trying to do any detail work, this is not the tool for you. So you're gonna switch from your chip brush to just a standard square brush or a rounded tip, which is the filbert. And then I like to have one little detailing brush. Okay, you can see it's got this super tiny point and that allows you to get into these nooks and crannies and really um, get the details that you want. So one thing to consider as you're painting your part, if you've carved out or emboss something, the lower levels are always harder to get with the brush, so you wanna paint those first. So in this case, when I paint my entire pauldron shape, I'm going to do the black background first, get into all these little details, and then I will paint the highlights in red so they really pop, but because they're higher, it's gonna be easier to get them with the brush. A couple more prep steps. It's always good to put your paint in a sacrificial container, especially if you're mixing paint. If you don't have the exact color you want, you have to mix like red and yellow to get some sort of orange, or for me, you know, usually I'm looking for like a really good pink or green. Um, I like the little to-go containers for sauces. They work great. And then just, you know, a disposable cup for your water so you can rinse your brush when you're done. You don't have to, but it's always a good idea to keep paper towels or newspapers handy in case you knock something over or get paint where you don't want it. You don't want to let the paint dry. It's going to get stuck everywhere. So just rinse it off and wipe it down immediately. If you get paint on your clothing, you're going to want to blot the paint and then dilute the paint with water. Okay. And I always keep gloves just because 
That's the type of person I am. Okay. So everything you need when you're going to paint is going to be, you know, a detail brush and then a wider brush. Either or. They're both acceptable. And yes, you can take scissors and trim the bristles of these so it does exactly what you want. They're a dollar. You can use whatever. You're going to want at least one type of paint, a cup of water, a place to put your paint, paper towels in case, right? And then your instant move my workstation somewhere else for you. All right, so that's all you need to know to prep out for painting.